Hi, my name's Adriana and I'm one of the sonographers at the University of Auckland. Today we're going to be learning about how to scan the spleen and the aorta. This is our lovely volunteer Bruce who's going to act as a model for us to scan. When we start scanning, we will start just by looking at the aorta. So we're going to look midline. So I'm going to apply some gel here in the middle of the tummy, making sure that the tip of the gel bottle does not touch the patient. I'm now going to grab my curved linear transducer and I'm gonna make sure that my orientation is set properly before I start scanning. So the first thing that I'm going to do when I put the probe down is adjust my depth so that I can see that superior portion of the aorta in transverse. Bruce, when you're ready, I'm gonna get you to take a nice big breath in. Good. And so I'm gonna start sweeping and I'm gonna make sure that my depth and my focus stay focused on the aorta, which is right here and we're gonna go all the way down and breathe normally. And I'm going to adjust my gain. Again, moving. Unfortunately, this is as much as I can change the depth. And until we get to bifurcation, good. When we interrogate an organ, we always wanna make sure that we do at least two sweeps. So I'm gonna start again, just superior. A big breath in and hold that breath. And again, here we have the aorta that I'm following all the way down and breathe normally. Once we get to about the mid portion of the aorta, holding a breath in doesn't really help us anymore and it's just about having enough pressure. Good. We're just going to A, adjust our image by adjusting our depth and our zoom and moving our focus so it's posterior to the aorta. We wanna make sure that our time gain compensation is set appropriately so that we don't have too much reverb within the aorta. As we scan, we want to do these mini sweeps through the aorta to make sure that there's nothing hanging off the sides of the walls um, as we make our way down. And again, you just kind of have to sit through some bowel gas as we, um, as we make our way through the midline. There we go. And until you see it tapering there, which is where we have our bifurcation. And I'm gonna do one more sweep all the way down. So going through that motion again, where we're just kind of sweeping to the side through the aorta, which is right here, that really strong tubular structure. And I get to some points where I have a bit more bowel gas and I'm just increasing the pressure. Bruce, are you doing okay? Yep. Good. Breathing normally as I make my way through. Now it's important that I don't interrogate the IVC, which is just right there, and I can tell that it's the inferior vena cava because it's not as strong or pulsatile as the aorta. Now I'm ready to go ahead and take some images. So I'll first start in, in um, transverse, and I'm gonna do a dual screen. My superior portion, I'm actually gonna use a celiac axis or the celiac trunk as kind of a landmark to take this image. Take a nice big breath in for me. Good. So here we can see that lovely celiac access and I'm going to freeze my image there, breathe normally. And again, a breath in. We'll try that one more time. We will hit update. There you go, and breathe. And then for the mid portion of my aorta, I'm actually gonna use the SMA as a landmark. So we can see the SMA right there. And actually on our lovely volunteer, the IVC swaps over to the other side and it does so just about mid. So we can see the IVC is now beside the aorta on the left-hand side of the patient when it should typically be on the right-hand side. So we can acquire our image about there and now we're gonna annotate it. So we have trans, um, aorta, superior, and then here we have mid. I take one image without calipers and then one image with calipers at the level of the mid aorta. And it's about 1.7. Remembering that when we measure the aorta, we measure from outer wall to outer wall and we always want to see the measurements done in the um, transverse plane. As we come down to take our images of distal and bifurcation, we're gonna go all the way until we see bifurcation and back up to transverse. We're going to hit dual again and making sure that our focus is set appropriately and zoom. 
So focus can probably go up one. No, it's gonna have to stay here. And we can now dual. And then there is our bifurcation. So now my annotation is going to say here, trans AO distal, it should hopefully, yep. And then we'll type in bifurcation. Now, as we go to take our images of the longitudinal aorta, we are just going to rotate our probe 90 degrees. And again, we're gonna do a superior image. With our superior portion, we want to see the aorta coming out right by the diaphragm. So big breath in for me. Good, hold in that breath. And we're just being mindful of the reverb that we tend to see within the aorta. Also making sure that um, the liver doesn't look too hypoechoic. Good, and breathe. And we can annotate that long aorta, and I will annotate superior as well. Now we're gonna go down to mid. And we wanna make sure that the aorta is in the middle portion of our image because that is where we are gonna get the strongest beams. So I'm looking down at the patient. I can see as well that there's the SMA coming off the aorta. So I can be pretty confident I'm at about the mid portion there. Take that image. And then finally, we're going to take our inferior or distal image of the aorta. And what we can do is we can actually try to come coronally where you can see that kind of tuning fork appearance here. And what we can see posterior to the aorta is just the inferior vena cava. So here I can be quite confident that I'm at the distal level of the aorta. I'm going to move my focus. And again, I'm playing with my TGCs, just making sure that that lumen looks nice and anechoic. Good. And now we're going to move on to the spleen. When we go to image the spleen, I'm gonna start with my patient in supine just to see how it looks. Now, Bruce, this is gonna feel cold. Sorry. I can see that tip of the spleen there. So I'm currently in the longitudinal plane for the spleen. And what I'm going to do is just make sure that my gain is set appropriately so I can see it nice and clearly. So big breath in when you're ready. Good. So I feel as though I can see the spleen quite well here. And all I'm going to do is adjust my focus good and breathe. So now that I'm happy with my window, I can start my sweep. A big breath. And I angle through those ribs, coming all the way down and coming back up all the way through that splenic tissue. Good, and breathe. Now I'm gonna rotate my transducer so that I'm looking at the spleen in the transverse plane, and I'm gonna do those same sweeps. Again, I'm making sure that I'm angling between those ribs. Big breath in, and I'm going to sweep through, and I'm going to sweep through. Good, and breathe normally. Now the first image that we wanna take is one that compares the echotexture of the liver and the spleen. So, oh sorry, the spleen and the kidney. A big breath in, So I might take an image right about here, just to show breathe normally, the echotexture between the spleen and the kidney to prove that it's completely normal. So I might write long spleen, and then I will hit my, um, my keyboard here and write slash left kidney. So now I'm ready to take an image of my long spleen. Big breath. And just focus on that spleen there. Freeze my image, breathe normally. I'm going to also measure it from the superior to the inferior border. Just like that. Big breath. I'm also going to take a look at the spleen in long, 
with color on just to prove that there's no varices. There we are, breathe normally. Now we can take our image of the transverse spleen, just like that. Again, ensuring that our focus is at the posterior level of the spleen. We hit trans to annotate our image properly. And that is how you interrogate the aorta and the spleen.